Hey there, it's Ben Housel here. Here we're gonna cover two things in Final Cut Pro 10. The first thing we're gonna cover is how we take a video and put it inside a computer screen. So we're actually gonna put the video um, inside our computer screen. And then the second thing we're gonna cover is actually how, if we're doing a video tutorial, um, we're gonna put a second screen um, inside our screen capture. So how we mix the screen capture and the video together. So it's these two ways of getting a video that we've captured with a camera, linked up with a screen capture or linked up with another video that we've captured that we're really looking at today. So how we have a, an image or picture in picture. So a lot of the tutorials you'll find here on my Final Cut Pro channel are answers to subscribers' questions. Um, so if you've got your own questions, then please do ask them in the comments below and I'll do my best to, to answer them. I have a growing list of new tutorials that I'm gradually working my way through creating. Um, and if the other tutorials and other questions that you're seeing are something that you're into, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button so you find out when I'm uploading new content uh, and hopefully a lot of the tips and tricks you find here for Final Cut Pro 10 will be useful in your editing. But without further ado, let's dive into the tutorial. And let's have a look first of all how we put our video inside a computer screen. Now we're gonna use a still image of a computer screen so we're gonna drop this down onto our timeline here. We just have a photograph here and we can use a moving image but then we'd be getting into the motion tracking of that um, which is much better suited to do in Apple Motion unless you've got plugins um, that you've paid for in Final Cut Pro 10. So we're really gonna have a look at how we place this into a, a still image computer screen. And then we'll also look at how we can animate that just a little bit. So we've got our computer screen here, which we can stretch the, the time out of. And we've got a little bit of letterboxing on the left and right of our video here, which we wanna get rid of. So basically I'm gonna select my image here, come up to my transform tools um, on the bottom left of my video there, and just increase the size of this. So we'll increase the size of this so that it loses the left and right there and we'll just position this so we have that entire screen up on our screen. So now we're gonna place a video inside there. It doesn't really matter too, too much uh, which video we use for this. So we're just gonna grab a short selection of me talking to the camera here and we'll mark an in point and we'll just drag this down to the timeline. And we're gonna mute the sound for this. We'll just stretch that back. So basically we're gonna pin this video um, into the computer screen that we have in the background. So with our video selected, we're gonna come down to this menu again and we're gonna come to the distort menu. And what this allows us to do is to actually pin the corners of our video. And you might find sometimes when you're trying to grab right at the edge of the video, you resize some of your panels here. Um, and so we can basically pin this into our screen here. So we'll just pin this in. If you're having trouble finding the edges here, then just come to the video, uh, knock down the opacity a little bit up here at the top right, and it will allow you to see the edges of your screen as you're kind of dropping that into place. So now you can see my videos in the screen and it's just hovering over the, the black edges a little bit. So if I put my opacity back up, and so now what I'm gonna do is now that I've got this in roughly the right spot, I'm actually gonna zoom in up here, so we'll come into 200%. And we're gonna use this little red box to move around. And now we've got our corners here. We can just drag those a bit more precisely until we find the exact edge of that. And I'm just using this red box to, to kind of move around so we can match this up perfectly and we might leave it overlapping just a teeny tiny bit. And then we'll come down and map it across here. Come across the bottom right and just make sure we're touching that edge as close as we can do. So if we just quickly whip around the image here, you can see there's no more red showing. So if I go to fit, uh, then we have our video now playing uh, inside the computer screen. So now, if you do have this set up and you wanted to add a little bit of motion to this, um, just to make it a little bit more convincing, we can use a compound clip to actually zoom into this a little bit. So I'm gonna come away from my distort tool here and just select these two clips and then come to file and new and compound clip. And what this means now is that we can use something like Ken Burns um, or another effect to actually zoom in um, slowly um, to this video clip, so I just use the default name there. Um, so now basically my compound clip 
is a composite of the video I put inside the screen and then also the computer screen in the background as well. So if I double click on this compound clip, you can see that both the layers are still there. So if we go back and we now select the Ken Burns effects, I'm gonna to come to Crop and select Ken Burns. So now I can, I'm gonna flip this round so it's zooming in rather than zooming out. So you can see the start is the green bar at the left here and then it's gonna end when we're a bit more zoomed in. We'll press done there. And so now you can see we've got the video inside the computer screen. Actually, we'll let it render out. So now if we come back to the beginning and we hit the play button, you can see we're zooming into that. The video's playing in the middle there. And I'm not saying very much at the moment yet, but uh, you get the idea. So if we did want to edit the clip that was in here or add a different clip in here, we can come into the compound clip and we can modify what we have here. So if, for instance, I want to trim this clip down so it's just halfway along, okay, and grab a different selection of this clip. So I just grab the selection where I spin the screen around here. I'm going to mark an in point and drag it down and just mute it as well. I'll grab the blade tool here and I'm just going to delete those two clips. And I'm jumping between the blade tool by tapping the, the B key, but you can find it in the toolbars menu here. And then I'm just quickly jumping back to the selection tool so I can jump back and forth. Now this clip is still big, so the original clip is pinned to the computer screen, but the new clip is not. So basically, if I wanna pin this now to the computer screen, I can copy this, so edit, copy, select this second clip, and then come to edit and paste attributes. And that will allow me to paste the uh, position, distort, and I don't need the volume. So the position distort can be pasted on there. And now that second clip is in exactly the same spot uh, on the screen. So you can see we can quickly add more clips into that screen if we need to. Um, and that will flow right into our zoom in here. We'll cut between those two clips because it's in that compound clip. So now we're gonna go and have a look at how we actually sync up two clips, our screen recording, and our video clip so we can have our video alongside our screen recording. So to do this, we're actually gonna create a synchronized clip. So I'm gonna select my screen recording here and I'm gonna select my video recording and hold down command as I select them both. So I have them both selected. And now if we right click, we can go to synchronize clips and that will create a new uh, clip where both those clips are synchronized. So if I keep the default file name um, I'm going to put it into my files, which is my event over here on the left-hand side, and we'll leave everything as is. So I'm going to click OK. So once you've clicked OK, um, you'll have this synchronized clip um, here, and if we double-click into that, we can actually access the timeline for that. I can trim down um, some of the information at the beginning there. We won't lose the synchronization. Okay, so basically I'm trimming this down, and these are both snapped right to the beginning. Actually, I want my video clip to be above my screen capture, so I'm gonna swap these round. So I was careful to make sure these were lined up at the beginning before I swap them round. And now, with this top clip selected, I can come to Transform, and I can scale that down. And so now I can have my video recording within the screen recording. So you can see, as we play back, now I'm explaining what's happening on screen, talking through the, the Disk Daisy program. And the nice thing about this is that the, the sound will be completely in sync um, with what we're doing on screen. And now if, when we drop this down to the timeline, we need to select this clip and come up to our audio channels and turn on the connected clip, which is my video clips um, audio. So we need to come and turn this on. So now when we play this back over in the audio monitors on the right hand side, we can see those audio channels. So now we can come in and edit this like a regular clip. So I just grab the range selection tool, delete the bits where I'm not talking or where I pause or hesitate. And so now we have a kind of seamless linking up of these two clips together with our video at the bottom right, and then our screen recording um, in the background. Now the screen recording I did um, was on a smaller laptop screen, so it wasn't at 1920 by 1080, which is the resolution of this screen, which is why we get these black bars on the right. I use a program called Switch ResX, 
to actually manage the, the different resolutions when I'm recording my screen. Um, so you may want to look into that if you're not always getting your screen recordings at 1920 by 1080. But now these two clips are, are kind of perfectly synced up and it's used the sound from both those clips to actually sync them together. So that's a brief overview of how to put a video inside a computer screen and then also a bit of animation. And then the second thing we've had a look at here is how to sync up our screen capture with our video capture um, using the synchronized clips function in Final Cut Pro 10 um, and then also how to manage the audio as well. The audio for my video clip here as well is also taking in two sound channels so I'd manage that as well. So dialogue one is my shotgun mic and then dialogue two is my built-in mic which will have a lot worse sound. So think about the sound you're recording, think about whether you want this kind of screen and screen option up here and hopefully these different techniques have been useful for you if you're editing in Final Cut Pro 10. And if you have any questions, then do let me know below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.